What's up everybody? It's Alex and RJ here from Backyard Sprouts. And in today's video, we're gonna walk you through the three most popular questions we get about how we reach out to potential clients. And that's coming up next. All right, so one of the first questions we get all the time is how do we reach out to clients? Like what is our first step? What is the process? What do we actually do leading up to the face-to-face? -face? Yep, so one of the things is we have to find clients, right? So Arjun and I both love to go out to eat. We're big foodies. So we actually find a lot of our clients just by being out in the city and going out to eat. Our friends will recommend, say, hey, we found this really good restaurant. And that's usually how we find a list of people we want to approach. And so after we kind of determine that their menu might fit microgreens, right? Because you kind of run into certain things like traditional Italian or traditional Asian. They're usually not as open to putting microgreens into their restaurant dish. Yeah. Um, you can definitely don't like feel free to still approach them, but just understand that they are probably a little harder or more difficult of a client to land. So after you find a list of clients you want to approach, then you need to figure out how you're going to reach out to them, right? Right. I, I think in the beginning, you and I both had restaurants that were back to back. We had a double yeah. sided. We we had a whole bunch of restaurants. We first started with restaurants that were really big supporters of farm to table movement, yep. right? And so we wanted to reach out to those people. And then we kind of just sort of slowly branched out from there. So once, like Alex said, once we have our list, we reach out several ways. One is definitely through social media. And we yeah. utilize a lot of Instagram, um, reaching out through DMs, direct messages on the, on the restaurants. We also email them. So if we look at the website and they have an email for general support or general inquiries, we'll email them. And then we'll also go ahead and give them a call. Mm -hmm. Like we'll call and see, hey, is the executive chef available? Is the sous chef available? Is the, if none of them are available, is the kitchen manager available? And we try to schedule some time when it's really good for them. So things to keep in mind when you guys are scheduling appointments is you don't want to call them during service, right. right? That's a that's something, you know, that you'll learn as well because we've we've gotten a few questions from you guys and a few comments saying that you guys have tried delivering to them but they seemed really agitated or they seem like they're really running around. You might have just caught them at peak times or, you know, they're getting ready for service. So you have to keep that in mind. So that's part of the research that we're talking about is if a restaurant, you know, opens at five and service starts at five, you don't want to come in at 4.30 or 4.45 mm -hmm. when they're about to get ready. You want to come in around 2, 2.30. They're definitely there. They're all prepping their stations. You want to keep stuff like that in mind. And last but not least, the other last step that we really, we really don't recommend is just doing a cold turkey drop-in, right? That's like last resort. You know, Alex and I have done maybe one or two. And that's yeah. because we've had just spare micros laying around we're like we have a bunch of micro samples let's just drop them up drop them by to a few places yeah. so um, one thing to remember with your social media is if you are going to reach out to a restaurant on social media don't forget that the person who's usually handling that social media account is not the owner it's usually not the chef it's just someone they paid to push that so don't reach out and say you know directly try to contact the chef maybe just say hey would there be a good time i own a microgreen business and i'd love to bring samples by is there a good time that i can come meet up with the chef then usually they'll say like yes thursday at two o'clock you know chef josh is always in so that's how we've gone pretty successful with meeting up with a lot of restaurants right so the next question we get asked all the time is what do you guys take to your meetups right like what do you bring with you to go so obviously for us we take samples and one thing RJ had this really good idea in the beginning of us going out to meet up with restaurants was to not be skimpy on samples. We right. definitely made it a thing to not skimp and give like one ounce samples. We take big four ounce samples to restaurants. Yeah, and, and that's I totally forgot we, we did yeah. that because a lot of the a lot of the chefs would take the samples and then after they've tasted them, we were like, Yeah, that's all yours. And like all of this is ours? We're like, Yeah, absolutely, because the the mentality behind that is we wanted to give them ample amounts of samples so that they can go take it back and, and play around with it on days that, you know, they're trying new dishes and things that it can go with. So right. it's definitely, you don't want to skimp out on, on those samples. Those are, those are costs you can definitely yeah. are, are worth eating because not only are you setting a good example right off the bat, like, oh, wow, these guys are, they really want to accommodate us. If they're willing to give us this much for samples, you know, this is a good stepping stone for building a good relationship. 
Yep, exactly. And just like RJ said, they're going to want to play with this and put it on multiple dishes. So if you only give them a one ounce sample, you're really only giving them one or two dishes that they can play with possibly, right? Depending on what the micro is. So you want to make sure that you include <clears throat> enough that they can try it on multiple dishes in their menu or multiple specials. And then you have a better likelihood of them, it matching with one dish and then them saying, okay, cool. Yeah, we can use this. So another thing we take with us is a fresh sheet. Want to tell them what that is? Yes, a fresh sheet is just a one pager. It's very clean of all the micros that we offer of that starting of that date. So if, um, and I think, do we have a copy of it? No, I'm not right here. We can't show it, but we could definitely. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll probably post that at that. Yeah, we can put a picture up. So a fresh sheet has all the micros that we're offering and their prices. So we break them down. You have to remember now, this is your clientele, right? So at the farmer's markets, we sell in smaller quantities, but to restaurants, we don't want to be going delivering small samples. So we break our fresh sheet down in half pound and full pound quantities. We try to keep all of our restaurants ordering minimum of half pounds because you have to make sure that if you're going to deliver to them, it's worth your time in the car, right? The effort to go through all that. So ours right now, I think we have 11 we offer, and then it has every price broken down by the pound and the half pound. <clears throat> we tell them we need, because we are grow to order, so we say the lead time. We also include our email address to contact us. And then we also include a minimum order quantity for certain areas of the city because it's just not worth us driving an hour if we're only delivering half a pound. So we try to enforce a stricter dollar limit or poundage quantity upon some of the restaurants we go to. And finally, once you have brought your samples and once you've brought your fresh sheet it's just a conversation from there guys I know it's daunting it was there it was very daunting for as for myself or like oh my gosh what are we gonna say but after a while you'll realize that it's really just a conversation between you and and them and we've already told you in the past we're not salespeople yeah. whatsoever right I'm an engineer Alex works in supply chain we don't have we don't have professional sales training all we do truly is we just let our passion fly what we they can feel the energy we're talking about how how excited we are about growing the microgreens the movement why we got started and, and a lot of it yeah. is they want to hear your story you know what got us into this right. why are you guys selling microgreens why are you guys doing this what makes you unique exactly and you just you just have a conversation with them don't yeah. get so mm -hmm. tense don't get so caught up with the numbers and and the microgreens and why you're different from other people that'll happen naturally just start yeah. talking about yourself just have fun with it and if they don't pick you whatever you know at least you're building that relationship mm -hmm. if something falls through the cracks which has happened to us in the in, in some restaurants they'll know that, hey, I have a, a person in case, you know, this supplier just falls through. I have, yeah. I have this person who I enjoyed an interaction with, right? And remember, you're trying to build these as long-term relationships. So you want to make sure that you guys really interact and hit it off. Like RJ, for example, two of our restaurants give him food every single time he goes to deliver. You know, they just have a really strong relationship and that's what's fun about it, right? Don't forget too that the chefs are really artists and they are kind of masters of their craft. So allow them to taste your micros while they're there. Ask them for feedback, like what do they think? Ask them like what kind of dish they think they could use it on and do they see if that could maybe apply to anything, maybe a special, right? They really love to talk about it. They're artists and they like to talk about that. So encourage it and make sure you're asking questions just as much as you're answering them. Yep. We hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And as always, <laughs> Alex and I are trying to build a community of like minds who would absolutely love it if you guys hit that like and subscribe button so you guys get the latest on our urban farming adventure. And we will see you guys next time. All right, so the first question, no, it's not the first question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it All is. Right. All right, so the number one, <laughs> Sit back up, you fool. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the first question. <laughs>